This is Sheila with Conscious Conversation Central, and I'm joined this evening by Danny, otherwise known as Lunacy. Thanks for coming and talking to me. Oh, we, you're welcome for having me. Well, I, I'm excited to have you here because we got a whole bunch of documents to look at. Did you have a chance to take a look at them? We're, we're speaking about the, the new postings that were done on the IUV of uh, do documents. I think it was 141 through 155, right? Uh, that sounds somewhat uh, right. I've got the page up in a different window here. I can scroll to the top. Actually, it's documents 144 through 151. That's oh. what the, the IUV. Okay. Yeah. For some, reason, I, for some reason, I thought it was 141 through 155. I was also looking for um, about an hour and a half. Well, no, when I spoke to you, when I texted you earlier, someone has said, oh my gosh, Sheila, have you seen this? And it turned out to be nothing, unfortunately, but... Uh, what, what was the, uh, the, this? Well, it was, it was another, uh, filing from someone else supposedly in New York and it had nothing to do with this, but they thought it might. And I, I spent some time digging into it and it, and it was nothing. Unfortunately, it was a hoax. Mm. Mm. Um, but I, re I started reading all of these last night and I don't even know where to start with this. Have you, now I know that you have um, had a lot of experience looking all, at all the legal jargon, you know, because you have a Black's Law Dictionary. When you were going through Heather's Precipe, did you have a chance to look at a lot of these or no? So as far as the documents that were filed on February 23rd, I've started to read through those. I've made uh, a few videos um, awesome. and then I've gone a little bit further ahead uh, just on my own, just a, a cursory glance and all of it uh, very, very non-standard. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't have any, any precedent that I can I can look to 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 compare the patterns therein and say oh look this is what I think's going on I'm just watching it unfold but it's it's very interesting and uh, that's where I'm at with it right now. Well, the one that has interested me the most, to be honest with you, uh, is really I think the very last one. Yeah, document one fifty one. Okay. Um. The standing declaration of dishonor and honor. Okay, yeah, I was I was kind of starting through that one. I, I I was only through page four, just getting started, but that one interested me as well. Well, okay, so I think you and I talked about my thoughts and feelings early on about how this went the way it has gone due to the fact that all the fraud had to be shown. Now, I think if you, if you saw them on the IUV, then you also saw Heather's email to Bill, correct? Yes. And so the last two paragraphs, well, the second to the last in particular, all in caps, they chose beginning with they chose and I don't have that, you know, um, I've got it right in front of me here. Okay. It says, And final notes on foreign actors and all caps here. They chose not to listen. They chose to not change heart. They chose human rights, abuse, corruption, etc. Now the remaining foreign actors expose themselves completely the greatest, and, and then we're back in normal case here, greatest show of love for all that is, and then a, a little heart. Right. I have to say that I, for me, 
That's what this is about. I tied that portion of the email to the standing declaration of honor, dishonor and honor. And the reason for that is, okay, so I, I understand a little bit more at this point in regards to the filings and timeline of the filings and what was done. And what I mean by that was that when the filings were made, it's my understanding, my comprehension, and I may be incorrect on this, but I, I'm not, I don't think so. When everything was foreclosed upon, they were given five years to close out the system, to turn everything over. They were, they, they were locked out of everyone's value the accounts, the, the, the treasury direct deposit accounts. And, yeah. and did this five year start, was this the December 25th, 2012? That's correct. That when it started? Okay. That's correct. And they were given five years to close it all out. They were locked out of the T and I want to make this point very clear. T D D a not T D a treasury Every direct deposit account. That's correct. There is a difference between a TDA, which does exist, a Treasury Direct account does exist. It is according to the Federal Reserve gentleman, Sean O'Malley, who took the stand in the courtroom. That is a, a method of purchasing Treasury bonds directly. So that does exist. But it is not what everyone thinks that is. Everyone who has been referring to the TDDA, their account, the one that is their social security number. See, this is where it gets that little twist. I feel like that's where the... I'm not sure if those who started the whole, and I'm not going to use any names here, because there's a whole crap ton of BS going on in, in YouTube land about that whole thing. But when those videos first came out saying, use your TDA account, access your TDA account, that actually I feel was done on either purpose or accidentally. I'm not certain. I heard in the courtroom whether the person that did that, that, that did that video was aware of it or not, they, they may have been manipulated in some way. Because th they, the powers that were, were locked out of the original depository accounts, the TDDAs, they could not get access. Now, my assumption is that's why in the last five years we've seen these big conglomerates beginning to eat each other. This one over here merging with that one over there and this one over here merging with that one over there because they've actually been foreclosed, but there's no money. They can't get access to what they've always gotten access to. And so it was all about to come time you see the five years was coming up and the eclipses were coming up and then all of a sudden this viral stuff started going out about how to access your account well only those who were the original depositors could get access but because the powers that were still had some kind of power, they manually reached out and took that money back because, well, you know, at that point they could. And so they, it was a PSYOP using the original depositors to access their own accounts. And then they came, swooped in and took it back and took and and took just basically stole it so 
I don't know what their, you know, end goal was in that. And like I said, this is part supposition, part, you know, putting things together from other things that I have witnessed and, and read as a puzzle piece collector. And, and, and it's awfully strange to me that almost five years to the day, there's an executive order that's issued, 13818, that still has not made it into the consciousness of a whole crap ton of the population that actually changed everything. It might not have appeared that way even to myself at the time that it was done and the recording that I did about it. I said all along it felt big, it felt huge, but I didn't really comprehend exactly how huge and how big. But the wording in that, when, when, when one takes their time and using a bit more expanded consciousness, really digs into it and allow it to sit for a bit. I don't know. I don't believe in coincidences. And the fact that that came out exactly five years to the day and BZ has said all along that the, the moment that came out, the world as we knew had ended. It's just catching up at this point. And now this email that you just read, they chose not to do. They, they knew they had the, that it was time. Apparently, from everything you and I, well, I'm sure, you know, in document 98, this has been going on, this universal cleanup has been going on since before you and I both probably were born. I mean, in document 98, That's that. That's the last price of pay that was excluded, right? Yes, and yes, and she includes it in. I have it right here in document ninety-eight under declaration of summary of facts. The very first one, long prior to July thirtieth, nineteen seventy-two, which is Heather's birth date. There has been a universal balancing and termination of heinous crimes, perpetual perpetrated, including those committed against humanity and this planet. This is, this cleanup has been going on longer than we've been alive. It's been so broad, so deep, and so systemic. You know, our conversation that we had that we thought was being recorded, but wasn't, and then we had it long after that. Yeah. I, I was saying that we'd been lied to for decades hundreds of years and i then i changed it to eons and now i'm give to understand that it is much 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 longer than that and yeah. so yeah. i remember we talked about the the cia director's comments to reagan about when he'll know his disinformation campaign is successful is when everything the american people think they know is wrong Exactly. Well, I really, and how in the world, and, and I'm, I, I am in this moment of now seeing so much clearly because there are folks that have been following the, the whole thing with Heather from the 2012 era who I feel were thinking that it they, okay, so I see this as a progression of, of, of consciousness even. Even I, okay, I didn't know anything about OPPT in 2012. I, I, I'd heard of it, but I didn't comprehend any of it even back in July when all of this started. And when I went to Knoxville in October, I still didn't know very much. And I'm not going to sit here and claim to know 
all of what took place or comprehend all of the UCC filings or any of that. I can't. But what I can say is that it has begun to seep into my consciousness that what this has been about all along is, yes, it's a cleanup, but it's a cleanup that has to start from within. There's a lot of folks, myself included, by the way, that was looking to what was going on in Knoxville and Heather and Randy almost in savior mode. They are going to fix this for us so we have access so we can then do whatever. But as a portion of all that is, as a creator, I now see that that has to come from within here first. It doesn't matter if access had been granted on some level. I don't think it would have mattered. And again, that ha because of all the programming and conditioning, which I'm, I'm aware I still have. So I'm not real sure what the answer is. I'm just saying it's like it's starting to come clearer to me that this is not going to be a one-step process. And I have felt that military tribunals were what was coming next. And I still feel that is so. Even more so now with with that message from Heather because I think it's going to be even deeper than that because again on some level we are all one and becoming singular like snowflakes we're water and individual snowflakes that's the way I'm holding this in, in, in at this point for myself and at some point when, because the energetics on this planet are becoming such that, um, in, again, in that paragraph, she states that they, that they will out themselves. I, 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 I'm paraphrasing there. But all the foreign actors are revealing themselves because the energetics won't allow it any longer. Hashtag all becomes transparent now was even larger than I realized when I created that hashtag. The energetics won't allow it anymore. I think. Well, it all boils down to, are you going to deny every avenue of sense that, that you have available to you? Are you going to deny your eyes? Are you going to deny these observations? Are you going to deny unrebutted UCC paperwork on file? Or are you going to deny that that exists when we can all go online and look it up and pull these, pull these papers out? Well, you hit something right on the head for me, okay? And this is something that I've noticed more in the last... Well, since I got home from Knoxville and I, I have d done a fair amount of this myself. So I anything I say, I'm saying right here. Okay. I have in the past been all too quick to take a cursory glance at something and say, Oh, that can't be. And let it go. I no longer do that as my little jaunt down a quick rabbit hole today <laughs> will prove something was forwarded to me that said, OMG, look at this. And I said, oh, if that's true, that could be big. And I went to go prove it to myself. And it turned out to be bunk. That didn't exist. It did. So like you said, easy enough to go and look something up. And I'll tell you when that really dawned on me as I was sitting in the courtroom and one of the pieces of evidence that Heather submitted was, and I, I want to say it, it is on the IUV because that, evening it, it was and it's in regards to goods in shipment I want to say it had 
the number is 1692, I believe, or 1642, but it was something that, and I could look back at my notes, but I don't have them right here in front of me. But that evening in the recap and speaking with BZ, I brought it up because Cynthia Davidson said, well, I've never seen this document before and I don't think that exists. And it was so funny because in part of her argument, Referring to which document? It was it was in regards it was in regards to uh, goods in transit or goods in shipment. Um, bear with me just a moment. I'm gonna. I'm gonna was this one of Heather's UCC filings? Or? Uh, it was in regards to. Um, it was in regards to. It had to do with it, yes. It was, um, I don't have it, there's no way I can find it in this sh very short period of time, but it is on the, sure. it, it is on the IUV because we were discussing it with BZ and BZ wanted to know, and I just, I very quickly Googled it because I had it right in my head because it was just that day and there was the document. And it was from, um, oh, it was, I want to say from, uh, it was a government website. And, you know, Ms. Davidson was, you know, poo-pooing the fact that it existed. And I was like, oh, really? Took me all of two seconds and, you know, tip-tap on, on the keyboard and I had it. Right. So that's what I'm trying to say for me. It's easy enough for folks to say, well, I'm reading this and I can't make heads or tails of it, so it's not real. And I, I don't know, it just seems to me like we've got, because when the trial didn't go the way everyone thought or wanted it to go, there was a whole lot of, oh, well, you know, now they're, they're in jail. They didn't know what they were talking about. And, you know, it's sovereign citizens and all the whole thing that folks do. And I was like, you guys got to be kidding me. Of course, I was there and I get that others weren't. But I don't know. There's just, and yes, I'm sort of sitting in judgment, I guess. I get judgmental about things like that, but it's like no research, no time put in. It's all a, you prove it to me and then I'll believe it kind of attitude is what I see most of the time when it comes to almost all of these things. That's the one thing that, that intrigued me about you. You have really delved into this paperwork you want to know so you're making it your business to find out you're not looking for somebody to try to tell you you want to know so you're making the effort and i see there's a lot of even folks that are out here trying to i don't know pay people to tell them what to do and how to go about getting access or getting out of the public and into the private and things like that and not, that's hey look everybody has to make their choices and i know it sounds judgmental and and i i really don't mean to be like that but at the same time i guess i get a little frustrated because you know like i said i'm just coming into this and maybe it's because i feel there's something here but also, too, I've been researching a lot of this, too, taking a lot of time to look into it. And the more I do, the more I feel that I have really been very fortunate. I feel like I'm sitting in on history in the making. The end of all of this corruption. I mean, I don't know what folks are thinking that, you know, what is just, they're just going to go away. The, all of this corruption that is so systemic on this planet 
and not just this planet it's been it's hashtag universal cleanup no wonder sometimes i feel like i'm standing on the edge of forever i mean it's it's so huge yeah it might take a minute <laughs> five years actually is kind of short when I look back and find out that this has been going on before I was born and I'm 56 and then I think about how long we've been lied to holy crap but I do feel like it's getting ready to really start breaking open big time I know that a lot of folks that have been doing this for a long time have heard that over and over and over again and they get jaded and I get that. Well, I do. I get that. You know, but I also feel like um, no wonder nobody wants to give out any dates. I've always been suspicious of dates anyway, but it's all been distraction. All of those other things, you know, I feel like. Well, I mean, I still haven't even figured out quite what this is, so it's hard to know what distractions are in the moment when when we're just watching all of this unfold and scratching our heads and, okay, what's going to happen next? Um, no, I it, know you're right, and I could be totally wrong about this, but I really feel like... And I've looked at a whole crap ton of stuff since 2009. You know, a whole crap ton of stuff, different conspiracies and different. And I think there's little bits and pieces of truth in all of them, but there's a big crap ton of lies in a lot of it, too. Uh, is 2009 when you started truth seeking? Yeah, I mean, really truth seeking. I, I thought I was looking for the truth, you know, because I was waking up to, you know, the fact that religion was something wasn't right there pretty much all my life. But in 2009 is when my, my baby brother showed me the movie Zeitgeist. Mm. And I went, what? <laughs> You know, I, and that was when I really went down the rabbit hole and never came back <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. I remember coming across Zeitgeist, but it was after I had already seen most of the, what the rabbit holes that Zeitgeist talks about. Ah. And there, there's a bunch of different Zeitgeist versions and stuff out there too. They keep making new versions, but yeah, it's, once you once you put together a couple rabbit holes and see that they're connected and working together and that there are other areas that you can explore that that are connected into this mess too then then you just it becomes a journey in itself and and you just reauthor your perceptions and and I noticed that early in my truth seeking journey uh, the way I'd reauthor my perceptions was to reclaim my authority from, say, the government and give it away to, you know, whoever was was dosing out some some new information. Yes. And and I'd keep then I'd reclaim my authority from that source and, and give it away to the next person that, that seemed to make more sense. And uh, now, you know what, over ten years later finally to the point of knowing my perception process intimately and all we can do is make observations and uh, the observations we're making now, we really don't have very much to compare them to. And really the, the big void or absence uh, as far as observations goes are, uh, really just to overtly see some mechanism behind Hat J supporting her and, uh, and really what ring in the darkness out of the landscape. And uh, right now 
we've we've got a, a bunch of of pretty interesting documents and statements uh, from Heather and and I'm just I'm scanning the landscape looking for these other observations and and that's what keeps me on the edge of my seat right now. Well, see, I guess for me that's where it's like in the last two months I think and you know those observations are coming fast and furious even every day it seems like there's more and more and more but in the last two months specifically it seems like every single you know that whole we are one every conspiracy every everything all those rabbit holes you mentioned everything is also connected all the spirituality all the conspiracies all the corruption that's going on i can see that very clearly now and I used to say that, you know, for every basket that a person could be sorted into, there was another like half basket just underneath that for those that didn't, they kind of sort of fit in this basket, but not really. So there was another basket just under here. And then there's another one just under here. And, you know, it was that, okay, so this just came in. The, the sorting the wheat from the chaff almost kind of thing where you have to sift and sort and then you sift and sort. And at one point I felt like those baskets were being put there specifically by the powers that were with like there's, there's truth with a little twist and distraction with a little truth and then a twist. Uh, and, I, I see what you mean. Right. Just enough. There's, there's, there's there's truth in plain sight but it's also a lot of truth with twist so you could be sorted into the newest basket to distract you from the truth from yeah the real absolute truth yeah the way the way i the way i picture that in my mind i use the word uh, thought corrals and they'll they'll give you an interesting nugget and then they'll just build a fence around it uh and, and one of many different ways, but uh, to watch to watch a new topic that becomes a rabbit hole, to watch that emerge uh, right from the beginning and see the way you know they, the powers that were, respond to this, and to see the censorship that pops up on YouTube, and then to see all of a sudden these these new basic spokesperson that just come right up to the front and then all of a sudden they've got, you know, within a couple of weeks, 25,000 subscribers and in a month or a hundred thousand subscribers and they're pumping videos out every day. And, uh, you know, a lot of the, the confusion and stuff, it seems they, they gets mixed with, with those truthful nuggets right there. And, you know, that, then you've just made a whole bunch of other observations because when I first started truth seeking, I'd come in after the fact and, I'm, and I just see this big mess, you know, well, okay, this guy's got all the subscribers. Let me, let me go in and watch his videos and all right, well, I, I can make some sense out of it, but now I can go, we'll go watch somebody else's videos and, and how much, how much time, how many now moments have I who, who has most of my time to myself put into researching this and, and getting far enough in watching enough videos from a particular YouTube channel or content creator to get a feeling for, okay, well, I, I either, I really trust this guy's vibration or I'm in resonation or I'm not. And a lot of times it changes over time. Um, but there's just such a mess in the landscape out there. And, Really, the, the most fruitful place I've found to be is to be 
in the rabbit hole before it's a generally known rabbit hole because then the truth seeking is just so much easier. It's just so blatant there there isn't any of that distraction uh, really around there because because they're not trying to to put energy into that yet. Right. Well, I've never actually had the, um, I don't know if pleasure is the right word <laughs> or the fortune to be in a rabbit hole before there were, you know, I, I don't know that I ever have, that I ever have. I'm, I'm always, you know, I usually showing up a day late and a dollar short, but <laughs> You know, I mean, in this particular case, I was just interested, you know, in what was going on here. But again, it was the, uh, for this, I know there's a, an awful lot of folks still very interested in what's going on here. And I'm also, I have the fortunate, the very fortunate pleasure of being very good friends with my friend Lisa, who was and has followed all of the all of this with Heather and the OPPT and the UCC filings from the very beginning oh wow and so um I have you know I have had access to her and her feelings about it but I mean I'm honest to, enough to say that when I heard about it, because yeah, you know, I was out there truth seeking and yeah, I, I heard about it. I didn't put two and two together that this was who that was until much later. Um, this came, the, the OPPT, the one, at the time it was the One People's Public Trust, came up at the same time as the Keshi material for me. Oh, the Spaceship Institute? Right. Well, oh, yeah, wow. I don't know if it was the Spaceship Institute. It was just the Kesh Foundation at that right. point. Right, yeah, yeah, wow. I spent a bunch of time looking into that, too. Right. Well, I, right at that time, too, I personally was having my own moment with not wanting to get caught in yet another thought corral, if you will. So I was, I took a very cursory glance at both of those and said, mm, no, and really didn't delve any further into it. Um, so I don't know if it just wasn't time or whatever, you know, my consciousness wasn't expanded enough to really allow it in or whatever. And I still don't really, to be honest with you, 100% comprehend all of this. Now I'm really going from my gut and really, and truly Lisa and her thoughts and feelings don't have anything to do with this for me. I researched it myself and accessed my own account. And the moment and I, again, I paid three very small bills because I just tiptoe in where something like that's concerned. And I want to buy an RV right away. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I wanted to prove it to myself because of my own experience in the business world. I was very well aware that, which I'm still amazed has net everyone seems to gloss over the fact that you cannot in any certain terms do anything with any bank account that doesn't exist. So the, the, the BS story that they're selling on that has amazed me from jump because, and again, I have said this in other videos and I've not, not one person has come back and said, Oh, Sheila, I tried what you said and it didn't work or it did work or whatever, I'm telling folks, go ahead, go out there and use your own bank's routing number and just make up a number. Just prove it to yourself. You cannot go out. If one number is wrong, if you don't put in the right bank name, if you don't put in the right name on the account, 
it won't go through if it cannot verify the account. I mean, come on. If well, it, that's the whole point of having the system to begin with. Yes. If it cannot verify the account, it won't even allow access. So the entire argument to me has been BS from jump. And like I said, I accessed my own account so that I could prove it to myself. I paid three bills. I have emails in my own. Uh, I've printed them out for my own records. They were paid. And it wasn't until six days later, six days later, that they were reversed. So none of what they say makes any sense in that case. Or and, and the reverse just means stolen. Your money was stolen because we found out that the, uh, the USAA reversal back to the Federal Reserve, there, there's no receipt for that. Where, where's the money? Where, where did all that go? I know, exactly. This is, that's the other thing that just seems to be glossed over in this. But and that's part of what you were saying, their whole scheme for stealing this money. So, so in a nutshell, your, your idea is they had someone on YouTube release some instructions for how all of us can access our own accounts because they were locked out and because they still had power, they had people at certain places within the infrastructure. When those accounts were accessed, they just kept the money and said, no, charges are reversed. Yes, because that's what I'm saying. They re Well, actually what happened, the way I understand it, and that's why everyone's stuff got reversed and there were these odd... Um, reversal codes. They weren't even reversal codes. Um, like I know that in Katie's case, and I may be misspeaking here to the actual terminology, but Katie, the gal that was with us in Knoxville, um, in, said that she was told it was something to do, that it was an, a manual thing done at a supervisory level. Well, yeah, because it was all manual because they couldn't do it automatically. They were locked out. They had to manually reach back to the business that had taken it from them for the bill or whatever, and they took it from them. That's my thoughts on it. And... That's why it was reversed out of everyone's accounts. And, and you know, Mark does, well, you still owe the bill or whatever. There are folks out there who have received, and here's the other thing that, that I knew was BS from Jump in the trial. There are folks out there that there are reports of people who got the titles to their vehicles from paying them off. Newsflash. No lien holder is going to release a title when they haven't received the money. They got the money. It was manually reached out and plucked back. So the lien holder was just out. This is why, in my opinion... The whole thing with USAA, that's why they went after him for the four the $500,000 after Randy. Because the money, first of all, the Fed took it back from USAA. Randy wired it from USAA to Whitney. Whitney's going, uh-uh, we got it. You ain't getting it back. And USAA lost it back to the Fed. That's why all of that happened with USAA and they made themselves complicit in the whole thing. My opinion, not fact, my opinion. That's why so much was made out of that $500,000 CD. But the other thing that everybody seems to gloss over is that there was a phone call, a recorded phone call that was played in court Randy was not trying to cash any CDs. Randy had called USAA to inquire in regards to opening 
a line of credit against the CDs, Mm -hmm. not cashing it. It was USAA's idea. The USAA employee gave him the idea and told him how much it cost to cash it ahead of time, you know, earlier, an early cash out penalty. So is there, is, are the, these digital phone call records that were played in court, are those going to be available as well, you know, along with the transcript? I don't know. I, I don't know how that works. I, I don't know. I know that when they submitted them into evidence, they showed the CD on the, you know, they had these big screens. Uh, well, they were television screens. And they had one of those overhead projector things, and they they would lay um, CDs down to show um, that it was an ev- evidence, and uh, you know they had them labeled, you know before they would play it for the jury to to hear. So I don't know if they're going to be available or not. Um, <laughs> and I found it hysterically funny that in several of these calls, it was very clear that there were, th- uh, you know, okay, so I used to work for a mail order company. And in the mail order company that I worked for, now granted, this was back in the 90s, as supervisor, I had the ability to listen to any call for training purposes. They were not at at the company I worked for recorded in any way, but we had that ability. But even so, the client would not know. The recording would not, I would not be able to be heard. Again, this was, in the 90s, early 90s, as a matter of fact. So I'm sure that it's only gotten better, but in at least three of these recordings, you could hear a third party listening in, breathing heavily, that was not the two people speaking, which I thought was kind of odd. I. I'm just making that as an observation. I have no supposition or, you know, anything really to say over that. I just thought it was odd. And in one case, you can hear two employees, one of them saying, oh, he's so nice, talking about Randy, as he just finished speaking. So I know darn well he couldn't have heard her because he was continuing to speak as if he didn't hear her. Well, and, and why would somebody have that comment unless, unless they knew that, oh, I'm recording this or, or, or you know, the, the FBI wants the recording of this guy. Why do they do? He sounds so nice. Is, exactly. Is that. That's, that was my thoughts. That was my thoughts. But again, that's just my thoughts and my observation. And I just thought it was highly suspect to be honest Well, everything with this case is highly suspect well that's the truth i mean um a lot of the evidence that a lot of the uh reports from the different companies you know usaa and um mostly the usaa reports but then there were a few others that that were up on the screen that for for me, uh, again, I've been in the corporate world and I know what it's like. Any kind of a report that someone has never seen before can be created out of thin air. Mm-hmm. It does not necessarily mean it is the report that it says it is. Now, I don't know. I'm not accusing anybody of anything, but I don't know what those reports were or what they weren't. Everybody has to, and I, you know, Like I said, I've said this before, too. I was shocked to hear the judge say to the jury right before, you know, he gave instructions to the jury right before the trial started that 
they were to interpret or it'll come out in the transcripts the the law as i give it to you and i thought to myself excuse me it's either the law or it's not it's not as you give it there there's just so much, there's so much blatant in my view but see when i think about the jury and i when we came home Someone had posted in Conscious Conversation Central, I think it was Katie might have asked me actually, if I had seen America Freedom to Fash, or yeah, Freedom to Fascism by Aaron Russo. And I had years ago, but Lisa and Albert had not. So we watched it, the three of us together. And there's a clip, and I even posted a link to the documentary, and I also posted the clip itself from YouTube in, in the Facebook group. One juror. It was very clear from, from the way she, it's like a seven or eight minute video on YouTube. Her name was Marcy Brooks. I'll not forget this woman. It was very clear to me from what she said that she was the lone thinking juror in the particular case that she was speaking of. It was the United States versus Whitey Harrell. He had not paid his federal income tax, I guess, for, I don't know, four years. And they were trying to get him in the state because they couldn't get him in the federal. And all he was asking for, A, was their authority and their jurisdiction to prove that they could force him to pay federal income tax. And apparently they couldn't do it in the federal. Oh, there was a clip in there, of course, of Whitey asking the IRS agents for their authority, written authority. And he said, well, I asked my, my supervisor about that, and he told me that my badge was my authority. And I thought, okay, that sounds just like the judge too. You don't, and he said, I thought it had to be written. I thought there had to be some written proof of your authority. No, I was told my badge was my authority. Well, everybody just accepts that because as you very kindly pointed out to me, we're handed our perceptions from early on. And that one lone juror, Marcy Brooks, in this particular case, they had asked the judge for a copy of the law that said that Mr. Harrell must pay federal income tax. And he had promised them that he would get it for them. And in their deliberations, they'd been deliberating for quite some time, apparently, they asked him for it several times. And in the end, his note to them was, you have everything you need. He never did produce it. And she said, now, wait a minute, let's look at this law that they're trying to say this man broke it apparently stated if one is required to file a federal income tax return then they would also be required to file a state income tax return she said but if they if he's not then it wouldn't matter and every other juror apparently was overlooking that fact she was you could tell by the way she said it that she was the lone one that stood up and said wait a minute you guys it says right here if you're required not you are required and therefore you're also required to do it this way if you're required and the judge never gave us the law because there is no law in the books it was never ratified and 
apparently the argument she said that several of the other jurors said, well, he's going to get away with it. They, it was like, well, what do you mean? Get away with what? <laughs> Again, that's, and I recognize that that's programming and conditioning yeah. that comes right up here and says, you know, wait a minute. I've been watching too many, what, law and order shows on TV. I guess so. Well, you know, he was found not guilty. And she actually went on in that clip to say that the judge was livid. He actually said he actually turned red and he actually got up and walked down to the courtroom. And she felt like she, on that day, justice was actually served. And she said she was never prouder to be an American. Well, because in my view, one lone juror fought for a minute beyond whatever conditioning and programming and actually looked at something and really read into it and took the time. And I know with all of my heart that in two and a half hours, none of those jurors could have even taken the time to look at, because I look at those UCCs, I printed them all out. I've got a stack like this. Mm -hmm. I look at them, I have looked at them for hours and I still don't comprehend them. So there's no way in my mind they could have even bothered. Well, well, here's a point that I wanted to make. <clears throat> the judge and the prosecution have all declared that this UCC paperwork is, uh, it's nonsense. It's basically gobbledygook. It defies common sense. And your, your comments were, you know, you've put some time into it and you're still not quite sure what the what these documents are saying and and i know i'm pretty much in the in the same boat and any any type of writing if you if you pick up a book and you don't understand what's in the book you know the the simple question is well what can you do to to get that clarified well look on the cover of the book it lists the author if the author's still alive i can ask the author okay is Maybe the author's nearby or far away, you know, might have to get on the internet and send an email if they're far away. But, but all of this was happening in the same room with all people present. And yet the system was slapping a label of this is confusing. This doesn't make sense um, to Heather's UCC paperwork. Basically, judging the book with and, and saying it's confusing and and bypassing the opportunity to ask the author who's sitting right there who wants really nothing more than to explain what all this UCC paperwork means and and they don't do that and furthermore they are doing everything in their power to keep it excluded and what they they were Unable to keep it excluded uh, at the very end, they, 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 they admitted the documents into evidence, but what was excluded was Heather's testimony about what all that means and how all of that came about. That's what we're all waiting for. No, exactly. I, I, I get that. And, and I am given to understand, now again, I haven't had the time, but I am, it is my comprehension that there are hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of videos or blog talk radio shows where Heather apparently went on every day back when this all first came out and took the time to answer people's questions. So that information, I have a feeling, is there somewhere. And I think it's all kept on the IUV, if I'm not mistaken. It's all there. I just, again, I haven't had the time to go and look at it or listen to it. 
But at this point, with everything else that I have seen, I, I don't even feel like I personally need that anymore. Because, I don't know, there's, I do still have some questions and I'm not going to not go and look. It's just that there's a whole lot of other things that if, if indeed, again, I, I've said this before in other conversations, if this was all gobbledygook and, and, and she was actually insane, I got a feeling that this whole thing would never have happened. It would never have gotten this far. Well, we'd be able to freely talk about every facet of it if that was truly the case. You know, the observations would spring forth from, you know, this erratic, you know, illogical train of thought or whatever coming from from someone standing up in front of court. Right. Um, but that, that's not what's happening. Heather's the most consistent and the most logical in all of this. And... There, there's something to the UCC paperwork. I know that, and I, and and I kind of resonate that, and I, and I feel like maybe that's what you're, what you're getting at. Just watching the system's response to the UCC paperwork, that's enough to know that wow, this, whatever is in here, is really damaging to their position, and it, it's just a matter of letting that information, whatever it is, get get the light of day. Exactly. And like I said, there's, there's other puzzle pieces that I have collected over time that I'm not quite certain how they fit exactly. But you take the fact that, that according to what has been said in regards to the UCCs, having foreclosed on every corporation on the planet. Okay. Now, Aside from this, in a different venue, under a different rabbit, under a different rabbit hole diving, it came to my attention that all the corporations on the planet were changing their names. Hmm. And it was actually brought up as some people were looking at it as a Mandela effect. In other words, Home Depot now became the Home Depot. And everybody's like, well, what's in a name? In the corporate world, if you've foreclosed mm. on Home Depot, but then you mm. add the in front of it and you reincorporate or whatever, then again, there's something to that. And that's not the only one that did that yeah well there's a whole mandela effect thing around fedex or federal express that's right and almost if you i mean i i would be willing to bet and i know for a fact that there's at least one uh i don't know in the alternative media that i'm aware of myself that reported on at the time that all of that was taking place in regards to the whole thing where corporations were changing their name and what's that all about? Uh, so again, that's a sort of puzzle piece that's kind of hanging out out here that kind of plays into this for me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Like I said, there's, I feel like there's a whole lot of things that are going on just under the surface. Like I've heard, you know, I have witnessed and seen different comments, you know, on my own YouTube channel, on Facebook and things well, if this is so, then why not this? You know, if Heather was made aware of an immediate slash imminent threat against POTUS and POTUS was aware of that, why hasn't he come to her rescue? Well, how do we know he hasn't? 
how do we know that again, like you and I talked about before, if indeed this is as big and as deep as systemically deep as it is, this is a chess game like no other. Make no mistake. They killed Kennedy. Do we really think that if she became aware of an immediate imminent threat, I mean, I don't know. I have seen others talking about how Trump is trolling the world and acting a certain way while doing other things. And, you know, we have the QAnon posts that are talking about different things that are going on just beneath the surface. There are so many puzzle pieces that fit into all of this that I really feel that this is a big part of too. Do I have all the answers? No. Oh, hell no. I sure don't. But I got, I got a feeling this is a huge, huge puzzle piece that all these other ones fit into somehow. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of related observations. Uh, again, the, there's no precedent really for any of this. So we're just the, the easiest place for, for me to be with all of this is just to be in a state where I'm undecided, a state without a perception of a, a, a state where, wow, I'm, co- I'm gathering a lot of interesting observations. You know, I, I can really see how some of these are fitting together in some really interesting ways, but, but I, I'm just not at a full place of knowing for saying, wow, this is whatever. I, I can't slap a label or a definition on it. And, and really this, I, I think that's what a big part of this exercise is about for, for all of us. Um, and to see just how insidious the indoctrination and programming has been and just observing how difficult it is just inside our own psyche to operate without a perception, especially when we've had a, a real solid static one uh, for so long. Yes. And, and this, is, this is like, uh, these are the baby steps of the spiritual journey here. Yes, I agree with you. And for me personally... I think that might be why I'm in like a a questioning everything mode and, and most of all myself, I'm, I'm being very vigilant in regards to uh, noticing my own reactions to things. And I'm using the word reactions on purpose because there's a difference between a reaction and a response. And for me, I learned a couple of years ago for myself, when I react to things without taking a moment to think, what's this about? That I, I almost, I can spot that in myself sometimes it's 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 not easy to stop myself and notice that reaction it's just like i'll have that reaction and then later but at least even now the progression in me personally is that i might react in the moment but uh, my my turnaround time to questioning myself in regards to that reaction has cut way down. In other words, at first, when I first started that, it would take me some time. Oh, wow. What was that about? You know, it could even be a day or two later, but I've noticed for myself that I'm noticing things a lot quicker. Yeah. You've turned your reactions into tendencies and, and once they're just tendencies, then, then you can choose a response among all the different options. Right. So that's how you move from reaction to response. Well, and I'm, I'm try- I am being very vigilant in regards to noticing 
well, I will say the word trying here because I haven't gotten really good at it yet. Uh, because the programming and conditioning that I know I still hold, um, I'm trying to get a handle on that. And, and what I mean by that is questioning any reaction I have sometimes a little too much, but okay, well, was that a program? Because I want to know that, you know, I want to clear those. I, I really, that that's my goal for me is to clear those. And And noticing those around me, sometimes it's easier to notice, for me anyway, and I'm sure we all feel this, others programming. When it comes up, I, I can recognize it really easily in someone else. Ooh, and I, luckily, I'm learning to keep my big trap shut a little bit because it's not, it's not pretty when I don't. But being able to to witness it or notice it in someone else and then turn it around and look at myself okay am i doing that too has been very helpful for me and what i mean by that is that there are i'm noticing the triggering as it happens in someone hmm. and so then that makes it a little easier for me to notice it in myself is what i'm saying Yeah. Yeah. You're breaking your now moments down into, into sub moments and each one of those sub moments could end up being your interrupt point for, okay, well, this is where I interrupt this whole process and, and just choose something different. Yeah. Yes. The recognition of, or the, even just the questioning first for me, has been a big thing. And I think that's why I feel the way I do. I mean, I really don't have anything I can point to about these documents, the, this whole thing with Heather and Randy, except to say that for me, this has been a very personal exercise. I have said from the very beginning, actually, that I could see where it was about way more than money way more but I didn't comprehend at first and then as as I've gone through this experience now I can see it's about all existence and I I get that everyone that was paying very close attention to this was really paying attention due to the money. And I also get that that too, at least for me, was part of a program, that program of scarcity, because we've all been conditioned in this idea of scarcity. And so when I mean, I've seen it whenever anything involves money, that's when the ugly comes out. Well, you know, maybe you got it like that and you don't have to worry about money, but I do. Or, you know, I saw it when, at, when my mother ha is deceased, but before she died, when her mother died, the ugly that came out in regards to who got what and who was doing what, it's just like folks get glazed over. And so when all of this came about and it was all about, well, it's going to trial and they're going to get off and we're all going to get unfettered access and, and, I've seen a lot of folks get triggered behind the fact that it didn't happen the way everyone had hoped. 
but I feel like it's so much more than money. It's so much more than the slavery matrix system. It's about, and I think that's why it's taking so long because I, I know, and I know I'm not going to put this in the right words that, it, that everyone's going to get it, but it's a, it real i really feel very strongly that it's about coming to the understanding about all of existence i know abesius talked a lot about the big capital a l l that's what this is about it's about changing the paradigm period it's not as much about money as everyone thinks. There was all this systemic corruption and this slavery, and this is all tied up into this. This is what I see here for me is the ending of that particular game or whatever you want to call it, that old paradigm. It well, guess debt based it, money is slavery. That, that, so to and and just knowing what i know of the economy and the monetary supply um to have all of us all of us souls in, in one instant have unfettered access to it uh you know that what that what that is saying is that hey the, that system it's done we we have shed the monetary system it's time to build a whole new system up from scratch that makes sense for all of us and to make sure the system uh, is resilient and to make sure that it uh, is protected from being co-opted by these special interests uh, and these what the powers that were those types of energy. Yeah, because I've heard a lot of folks say, well, we need to fix it. And I, there is no fixing. This was never. No, this whole system was built from square one to do the job that it is doing perfectly right now. It, and, and if there was, maybe it's not doing it perfectly, but it's doing it as it was designed to. Yes. The imperfections are the observations that we're all putting together now and that we're coalescing and we're saying no to the system. And it's, it's to, to even ask the system to change itself, to uh, even have an expectation that we can fix this system, that's to give our power away. Yeah. The, the whole intent, the system was built with the intent to do all of this to us and have all of these effects to us. It is up to us to say no to the system and to build something new. I agree with you. And I have to say too, at this point that yes, it was, I, I agree with you that it was built to do exactly what it is doing. For me, however, when I, really on a more than right up here level, I, I had to step back and read executive order one, three, eight, one, eight through a more, not just foreign, not just United States, not just planetary viewpoint. When I read that document, and I, when I, because I have said we are all complicit, and I know folks don't want to hear that, but we are. Like you said, to try to fix what we have, we're, we're, we, it's not that this was done to us. By any shape, manner, or form, we are all of us complicit in this and continuing to be so, myself included, by the way. I don't have the answer for how to extricate us all. It's going to take, in my view, 
that quantum view of consciousness, that changing of that paradigm. And that is what is taking so long, by the way, in my view. Everyone myself included so it's not like i'm sitting here saying oh i got this i i got it i understand and i i'm just waiting for all of y'all no uh uh-uh. uh i know i'm not completely there either but it's that they they a lot of us are still looking at all of this saying well when it's going to be when is it going to be fixed when is it going to change we have to change. I'm amazed at how many of us say, well, we're all one. And yet they are doing this to us. What? Are they not we all one, two? I'm confused. <laughs> it can't, I, I, I mean, for, for me, it's like... Um, Huh. I, like I said, I know I'm not there yet. I, I don't, I, I don't view myself as a victim of anything. I'm aware that I'm complicit in it continuing as well. I don't know what the answer is, but I know what it's not. And it's not standing by and waiting for Heather to do her thing and fix it for me because that's just giving my power away to her. It's not um, waiting for the powers that were to all of a sudden disappear because again, or, you know, the Alliance to come and rescue me because again, that's just handing my power over to them too. Have I figured out how to extricate myself and therefore, you know, I don't know. All of us? No, I haven't. Um, I don't really know. <laughs> if the, first, the first step towards fixing any problem is acknowledging it. And that's, that's where we're at. We're, we're acknowledging what is. We're acknowledging what is definitely a lie that we've been told. Right. We're acknowledging the voids or gaps in our perceptions. We're asking questions and we're worth letting go of expectations of anything more at this point. No, I agree with you there. Okay. So that's, that's good. Thank you for that actually, because sometimes I get a little frustrated. Can you tell? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we all do. I mean, because you know, there's, there just seem, you know, I don't know. I get frustrated with myself and I get frustrated with my other selves, you know, that I, interact with, you know, in other areas of, of the playground where, you know, we're either, we are either creator beings coming into the knowledge of who we are or we're not. And I, I don't, I just don't see how there's any kind of in-between. And I, I personally am very clear that I have hand, had a hand in creating everything in my reality. You don't have to be able to describe the entire mechanism of creation to know that you've had a part in it. And, and, and you're acknowledging that. Yes. Yeah. Do, 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 do I know how to extricate myself no i'm i'm but i am figuring i i have figured a few things out you know i mean a few things what not to do, not to do <laughs> not a whole yeah. lot but a few things and one of them is to stop beating up on myself so much and uh Cause I do that. Oh, uh, you're right where you're supposed to be. <laughs> Thanks. We're all right where we're supposed to be and we're all just doing our best. Yes, I know. 
I, I, I just get frustrated sometimes because I hear some folks talking about, you know, their creators and yet then that we want to turn around and blame somebody else for anything. I did. It, I don't know. It's frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, you have you read all the way through the honor dishonor document? I I actually I have read all the way to I was on the very last page. I was on the very last page by the time I had finished. Uh, mm -hmm. I had I have actually read all of the documents now except for that last page. Um that were just uploaded to the IUV. Um, I did not get to the annex and I figured I wouldn't bother because I actually read it um, prior to this. It was published on the IUV several weeks before the trial as it was, this is the document that the affidavit in support of abatement ignorantia Judicis, I don't know how to pronounce it, S. Calamitas Innocentis, and in, in English, the ignorance of the judge is the misfortune of the innocent. This document was the one that Randy heard some inmates very loudly discussing and using some very, very loud swear words. And he, he when he spoke to them through the vent, Apparently, they told him about this, and he copied it down and got it out to Patricia, his cousin. So this had already been published on the IUV, but mm -hmm. it is also part of document 151. So I hadn't gotten to that, but I'm actually going to do, because I feel like this one is just as important as document 98 and I'm going to be doing a, a recording of document 98 and this one myself mm -hmm. putting it on my YouTube channel um, because there's some pretty pretty big things in here there's some neat observations for sure yeah well you know, subrogation, theft, commandeer, fraud, terrorism, slavery, subversion, anarchy, misprison, collusion, anarchy. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's got quite a glossary there at the beginning of that. And, yeah. and that it's all handwritten, like looks like in pencil, I'm guessing, because I don't well, think they pens yeah no they're not allowed pens and it's a golf pencil from what i've been told yeah and they're not even allowed to sharpen it it once it it goes dull you have to wait until apparently the next time you're allowed out which is apparently um not very often they're on lockdown and they're only allowed out i think one hour Per day and it's not just her apparently yeah the entire, assist, the entire facility which I find very interesting because it's another observation that's kind of like goes with all the rest especially when they were dieseling her around this is another kind of similar vibration yeah well there's a feeling for me there's a feeling of when when they were do when they had sent her before all of this when she was on her tour <laughs> of the different hotels around the United States, which why they sent her all the way to Oklahoma City was beyond me, but okay, whatever. When that was happening, I had a sense again, got nothing I can point to, but I had a sense of buying time. Because again, especially now in, in hindsight of my 
coming to know that they were given five years to take this all apart and they chose not to. And then you, you know, throw the whole executive order in there. I got a, I got that same sense of buying time now. And I don't know if that's what the whole trial was about or not. Who, who do you have the sense is buying time? The powers that were. I'm not sure. Again, I'm not sure why. And I'm not sure. Like I said, I got nothing to point to. It's, a, it's just a feeling that I have. And um, when I look at all the puzzle pieces that, that come out, you know, and try to discern whether or not this one over here is, you know, is there something? Because I know there's misinformation and disinformation mixed in with all of the puzzle pieces that I'm looking at. I mm -hmm. get that. But when I see all these different things that are taking place, it's almost as though there's, there's some, like I said, it's a huge chess game that is, can be, could be rather deadly for some. And some of the things that are in here too about the military and the, the cleanup in general and the different things, how, how, how this has gone are you talking about 98, number 98 right well, now? Well, number 98, but there was also, there was also some things in here in some of the other ones, uh, not just 98. It was in some of the, here we go. Um, the unified support of the universal cleanup to all being on this planet, acting in honor, documents 98 and 101 restated, and including but not limited to one, support and resources to United States militaries, Hawaii, January 13, 2018, and two, support and resources to United States militaries, Japan, January 16th, 2018, and three, support resources and sources ready for immediate appropriation and allocation. Documents 18, 43, 54, 55, 56, 98, and 101. Restated, specially declaration of addendum of law, presumption and perpetuity, subject to additional ledgering of separate acts incurred after 10, 18, 17, 9, 01 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, what I am given to understand about this whole additional ledgering of separate acts, everything that has taken place since October 18th, which was when she ordered this by precipe to be stopped, everything that has occurred since that time has been ledgered against all of these foreign actors. And on some level, whether they got it up here, now I, some folks that see this will go, what does that mean? For me, in the forefront of your consciousness when I do this, because there's a back part or the higher self of a person. And then there's the, in the here and now, human consciousness. So whether they got it right up here in the forefront of their consciousness or not, they were told. They didn't want to do the research or believe it or whatever. They were told and told and told and told and told in all of this. And so all of this now 
<laughs> I love the way Lisa says it has is going down in their permanent record. <laughs> you know, so to speak. Yeah. And in this particular case, ledgered against their value accounts. Now, see, that's the other thing. We all have these value, value accounts, these TDDAs. Whether they want to believe it or not, they have them too, including Davidson and Svolto and Still and all. I mean, they are human and they are of this planet. So these are being ledger, each one of these separate acts. It's my understanding, and again, I, I may be misspeaking here, but in the foreclosure, in all of what she did, there were repercussions if it wasn't done when it was supposed to be done. They would be locked out, and for every act that was done, it would be ledgered against them. Very clearly, that's what this is stating. And as, I don't know, whatever all this is, on some spiritual level or whatever, I mean, I've heard different things about, you know, the light and the dark, and I really don't know how I feel about all of that. But on some level, I have to feel like once... Or if these beings, wake up to all of this and they finally get it up in here, oh my, my chest hurts for, for what they're going to go through. Again, against their permanent record. I'm just not even sure, you know, what that actually means. But I'd, I'd have to go back and look, but I got a feeling that this January 13th in regards to United States military's Hawaii and, and the 16th United States military's Japan. Mm -hmm. Was that when those missiles supposedly... Were launched, but then uh, we were joking, not really. Yeah, see, I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah. That just came in a few minutes ago in my head when I was reading this to you. I was like, wait a minute. Is that when that thing went off? I got. I would have to go back and see. Somehow I got a feeling. Are you talking about the, what, there was an emergency broadcast alert that, uh, what, there were incoming ICBMs to Hawaii and... What, basically kiss your ass goodbye? I mean, I don't know. What do you do when there's incoming ICBMs? <laughs> I know, right? And then, oops, oh, sorry, we hit the wrong button. That's not real. But then I heard later, and I again, I, I don't know. I didn't see it myself, but I, it was my understanding that there were supposedly some fishing guides that actually saw something being shot out of the sky. Mm -hmm. Whether that's true or not, I have no idea. But it was a very interesting little side note because I got to thinking to myself, gee, is it that easy to accidentally hit a button and scare everybody to half to crap to death? I don't know. That just sounded so wild and weird to me that there was something else to that. And, and then later I heard, and I, again, don't know how true this is, but it was going around that the Clintons happened to be in Hawaii when that happened. And there was an innuendo that, you know, hmm, maybe somebody wanted to get rid of somebody else. Because, you know, as stuff starts falling to pieces, people start turning on each other, you know? I, I don't know. It was, and I don't know how true that is either, but it was an, another interesting little you know, maybe true, maybe not. And how do you check those kind of things? I don't even know. 
Well, we have to stay in the observations. And right here we've got Heather uh, in a, an official court filing mentioning a specific date, January 13, 2018, and talking about the U.S. military in specific locations, uh, that being Hawaii, and then mentioning another date, January 16th, and talking about the U.S. militaries in Japan. So we can easily go back and cross-reference and check this emergency alert broadcast that uh, went to Hawaii. Yeah, uh, which I'm going to do when you and I are finished here. because I Yeah, I, that'll I, be interesting. Yeah, I'm just I'm just interested. That just kind of came in when I was reading that to you. Ooh, I wonder if that's even possible. But we've got some observations that, mm, you know, they they just they feel like they're syncing up, but yet we can't we yeah. can't say for a hundred percent certain, and so we're just yes. we're just watching them. But yeah, well, I've got uh, I've got the first. I don't know the first few documents uh, I've made videos on of the of these new filings, um, and it, this one by far this the one about the honor dishonor really looked like it had the meat of it in there. So um, yeah, I I felt that too, and I don't know. Like I said, all you're right. All all these are are observations. They're not. I I don't have any inside knowledge i don't have any proof i have nothing but my own thoughts and feelings about any of this you know i have no well, your greatest power is to assign meaning to any facet of your life experience no matter what that meaning is or what that facet is you're the one that gets to assign that meaning so we've got a bunch of different facets that we're coming up to and we're just we don't know quite quite what meaning to assign to it yet but we're we're kind of kind of got an idea of the flavor that it might have yeah i'm excited to see what's going to happen though because i i i do feel for whatever the reason, and maybe it is because I have had some time um, in Heather's presence. I don't know. Maybe that's part of it. I, it's not like I got to sit and chat with her. I mean, I've chatted longer with you than I have with her. I, you know, I have. And But watching what took place in that courtroom, being in the presence of that entire thing and reading all of this information and coming into it with all of my other observations intact, I feel there's way, way, way more than I can even make heads or tails out of in this that it's deeper, broader. Like I said, I've said many times that when I really feel into this, I feel like I'm standing on the edge of forever. It's that big. I can't explain that. But... There's just too much of it that seems to be pointing in the direction of everything in all of these documents, including the ones that I still can't make heads or tail out of, and that's the UCCs. It's, it feels like there's something to it and, and, and more than just something, but big. So if there was nothing to it, that would have easily been dismantled in court rather than just having some labels placed on it and it being denied. Yeah. I mean, when you look at some of those PACER, the, the, on the IUV where they're, they've got the live database and you look and see all the things that were stricken. Now, I, I'm not certain 
how that goes as far as stricken things. Maybe you can answer that for me. But all the precipices were stricken, meaning doesn't that mean, I know that the jury didn't get to see them. I know that. Um, but does stricken also mean that it's off the, the record so that it's not even in the, the transcripts or anything like that? I'm not uh, certain. The, I'll just qualify this by saying I'm not sure, but I've got, uh, I've got a knee-jerk reaction about it. And my knee-jerk reaction about stricken is uh, it's been filed with the court. It's been received with the court. And that, that has to happen before it can be stricken. Right, because it's in the, it's in the piece right. of documents. It's just what's stricken. My sense of what stricken means is that it's not going to be used in the decision-making process through, right. through these proceedings. That's what I thought. And yeah, there's, there's it's still been, part of the record, right? It's still part of the record, but if it's not allowed in, like you said, the decision making process, then for me, like I said, there was a whole lot of the, that portion of it, that what I said to you about how, and that will be in the transcripts to how the judge Actually, I think it's in the, it might already be on the IEV because I feel like I read it already too, where he actually uses the words, I think it is on the IUV, where where they were doing the jury selection and the, the transcripts from the jury selection. It actually says in there, I believe this is so, either that or I, I'm, I've gone quantum and I've already read it on some level. <laughs> But I know I heard him telling the jury that they would follow the law as he gives it to them, which just sounds like something normal a judge would say to me. Well, I have to tell you, sitting in the courtroom, my mouth dropped open because it sounded like he was going to tell them what the law was. And I'm like, wait a minute. That, that sounds like something that I have heard a judge say before for sure. Really? Yeah. And is that, and, and, and so my, my point though is that sounds like wrong anyway. Uh, the, the jury yeah. isn't the, the jury's job is just to decide what the facts are. And once they have the facts, then the law dictates what is done with those with those facts. That's my understanding of it. The the jury the jury doesn't make any decisions about any laws. The jury is bound. They are trapped by these laws and by these orders of the judge and and it's more restrictions for them. Yeah. Mm. But so the jury could decide that, oh okay, the the facts that the government brought forth, they don't, they don't appear to be facts. So, so we're going to, we're going to not include those as facts supporting the prosecution of the defendant. So we find them not guilty. They could, they could do that, but, but they, but what the jury can't do is say, Oh yeah, well we see that, money was we've got all the receipts which they don't have but, no. but we've got all the receipts and paper trails here and we've got uh randy on video we know that he laundered money but we find him not guilty because we disagree with this law yeah, no, yeah no, i get that you can't, you can't do that it's right so so really what i think the judge is trying to trying to get at here is um the law is an algorithm or a flow chart for their decision-making process or, or for what happens in, in the courtroom after the facts are established. Uh -huh. And it is the jury's uh, duty to establish what the facts of the case are. And once, they, once they've established what the facts are, okay, well, either, either uh, 
Randy did this fraudulently or he didn't. If they if they say, okay, well, the fact is that Randy established or you know made these transactions fraudulently. Well, that's it. That's that's a done deal. Right. That's that's they come back guilty. Well, there was so much about all of that that I felt like was like I said there was it was just felt looked sounded corrupt from the very beginning and I just I just don't even that's why I said it seems to me like I still don't I still cannot sit here and say I comprehend all of what happened because I really expected it to not go the way it did in hindsight, I can see that there was no other way it could have happened, actually, because the, the, the corruption had to be shown in no uncertain terms. And I think that for me, because I was, like I said, there were so many, oh, at, at, at one point, the clerk that sits right in front of the judge during one of the breaks came up and she was very kind, but she, she asked us not to make faces because sometimes I just went <laughs> and so did Katie. We, I was sitting next to Katie this particular day and we would hear something or whatever. And it was, shockingly corrupt and it, it the just the shock or the surprise apparently was disturbing either her the judge the jury somebody and she asked us to not you know make those faces or whatever and so i i decided at that point perhaps it would be better if i just kind of sat behind a pillar or something because i couldn't control my facial uh, I couldn't always control my, my shock at some of what, what I was hearing. You know, that's probably a, a big chunk of the reason why they don't want anything in their recording. They don't want any audio or, or video recording. Like these are, these are just pretty stark observations of, of corruption all the way through. It'll be yes. interesting. I don't know when we, when we get to whatever point that feels like it's a good point to do it, to just go back through everything and just do a quick, uh, just combination, uh, uh, video of, uh, of just the one, two punches of all the different corruption observations that we've seen all throughout this. It, it well, like just I said, defense for each corruption, and it could be like an hour long at least already. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I actually think that if I if I remember right, I would have to ask Katie. I think that comment was made because it, I might have actually had an audible gasp when the Federal Reserve VP made the statement about if they got rid of all fraud it would damage the economy <laughs> because it was it was all I could do to not oh that was just I could not I couldn't believe that actually came out of his mouth it'll it'll be fun to read through the transcript for sure yeah yeah uh, uh, still any uh, no word on when they're going to be available no, and it's my understanding that um, it's going to be very expensive to get them. Well, we're talking almost six grand. Uh, yeah, uh, it's all those pages. Yeah, all the. It, it's ridiculous. The system is is absolutely ridiculous. This is supposed to be uh, a matter of public record, and it has a higher price tag than anything that you, any book that you could buy on Amazon. You know what I mean? This I should know. just all and go right to our Kindles, right? As it's happening, we should be able to, to see the, the, you know, the closed captioning. 
Well, and I'll tell you something else that I just discovered today, which I was a bit flabbergasted about. That rabbit hole I told you that I went down that had to do with another supposed court case in New York, Mm. uh, Northern District. I went to the Pacer dock system myself thinking, I said, you know, I, I went in and I Googled up, how do you find a case document, right? And it took me right to the Pacer doc system. And so I started reading, oh, oh, I can register for an account. Oh, cool. I'll register for an account and I'll be able to look at whatever docs I want. Mm-hmm. It costs you 10 cents a page to yeah. look. Yeah. Not to print, to look. Yep. And if you put in a search and it returns no match, it's still 10 cents. And I was like, oh my God, what a racket. What a racket. Yeah, I ran into all of that too. For heaven's sake. I mean, I, it was, I was shocked enough to learn about the, the court registry investment system. That was a bit or is it system or the thing that was, you know, all these documents get turned into money. Well, well, if you're charging 10 cents a page just to view them, I could see where that's, yeah, no doubt. It's turned into a bond and traded and all that kind of thing. Uh, it's shocking, and I don't know how many, you know, folks hear that and they're like, ah, oh, that's crazy. Really? Go look for yourself. It's on the IUV. The links to the actual system are right there. That's why they're putting everything there so that anyone can go and look for themselves. Oh, well, that, that's, that's too much trouble. You see, that's too much like work and nobody, <laughs> that's where my frustration comes in. Nobody wants to prove it to themselves. They'll just, oh, poo-poo it, you know, that kind of thing. So, I don't know. I get very frustrated behind it. Can you tell? <laughs> yeah, I hear you for sure. But that's why, that's why we're digging into it. Yes, You know, people, I I know I get emails from people all the time. I know other people are digging into it. They, you know, having videos like this, you know, helps to, helps to motivate other people to, to keep digging. And there's, there's plenty of people that are digging on this whole facet that, that might not even be investigating hat J. I, I get, I get documents sent to my email all the time of, people who are in court battles and are basically giving the courts the same kind of notice. So it's not just Hat J. I think up to this point, Hat J is what the, the most well-known figure that is in a, in a battle with the courts like this. But there are quite a, quite a few other people that have seem to be operating with the same kind of light or at least the same pattern of behavior of, you know, asking the courts, show me your jurisdiction. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. I am glad to hear that. I did see where, um, and I'm not sure which one of these, um, documents it was in that were just published. But I did see where, I think it might have been, um, maybe it was just in the email that Heather wrote to Bill, but it was a public notice that she was giving to the U.S. Marshals. In particular, Oh, oh, that was, that was an email. Was it? Okay. Yeah, let me scroll back up and take a look. Okay. That'd be awesome because particularly when she said, see, there are other factions of this universal cleanup, obviously by what she said there that she is aware of. Okay. Let's see. Why don't I just 
I don't think I read the whole email before, so okay, that's did I, awesome. Did I did I read the whole email before? No, not on this recording. You didn't. Okay, all right. Uh, she says, "No worries, Bill. We are on day two of lockdown again for unknown reasons. Started well before the brief fight. In fact, the two women were brought back in." Professional opinion and based on my firsthand experiences and observations in here, the fight happened because we have been in so much unprecedented lockdown. According to Corporal Thornbury, she doesn't know if the spelling's right on that, they can only go 72 hours before they have to answer to anyone. And as all in the universal cleanup are aware, Universal changes or universes can change within 72 hours or less. Professional suggestion to U.S. Marshal Sanchez. Find another contractor. As it sits today, the U.S. Marshal cannot recover from the liability created using this particular contractor or similarly operating contractor. And then a little heart made out of the less than sign in the number three. And then in parentheses, full reports have been compiled since August 2017 by various undercover agents, or U slash C, I'm guessing that's undercover, throughout U.S. Note, this topic is not, primary, is not my primary task in universal cleanup. Uh, Then she says, tablet battery low, no showers, phones, tablet recharges, personal status and updates through ICOMS to all, Um, third-party notices of dishonor via wellness check requests when applicable, and final notices on foreign actors. And this is where it says, they chose not to listen, they chose not to change heart, they chose to remain or sorry, they chose human rights abuse, corruption, etc. Now the remaining foreign actors expose themselves completely. Greatest show of love for all that is. And another heart. In parentheses, follow the money, in quotes. And the human trafficking slash terrorist dismers- disbursements programs, and in brackets, immigrant slash refugee, all mapping stored in Harvard Inspire, well, actually, it's not quotes, it's all capitalized. It sounds like the name of a database to me, with Mm -hmm. special attention to Harvard Global Services in January 2017 transfer of Harvard $35 billion trading platform moved to BlackRock, BlackRock in all caps. Logs for uh, MA department is at Massachusetts Department of Transitional Assistance, an agency ID number of 6002771, including but not limited to Russia, China, and AIIB, BRICS, CIPS, Henry Todd, Jonathan D. Betts, KL, and Guo Rong Ding, the chairman of Cheyenne Wanguo Securities Company Limited. So much more at all. All interesting actors. So happy to retire the game boards in all perceptions. Love to all. All got this and another heart. So that's that's what was in her email. So we're coming into the middle of a conversation here, and it's just wow. Well, let me things going on. Yeah, let me share a few things. U.S. Marshal Sanchez was, I don't know if he still is, Randy Beans. uh, uh, He was assigned to Randy for protection. Before. I got to pause you for just a second. Hold on. I've got to take care of this cat. (laughs) Sure. No problem. All righty. Well, we took care of that. Sorry for that interruption. Well, it was actually very fortuitous for me as well. <laughs> oh, good, good. So I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you finish uh, what you were what you were saying there. Well, I don't. I'm not certain as to the current status, but I know that Marshall Sanchez had been assigned as Randy's protection prior to the trial and during the trial. 
as I, I met him. Well, I didn't actually meet him, but he was pointed out to me. And <clears throat> when, whenever he would, there were more, of co- there were lots more marshals, of course, but whenever he would leave the room, there was always someone very near Randy. Um, so I do know that that is whom she's speaking to. As to exactly why she's saying that, I, I really don't know, but I suspect that there's been, you know, maybe some sort of compromise again, you know, with her all caps there in regards to the they chose you know that that set that second to the last paragraph it feels to me when i'm feeling into that that it is in regards to that um other than my feeling i have nothing else but um other thing that I was going to say about that, bear with me a moment. I'm going to take a quick look at that myself so I can, because there was something else I wanted to share with you that you'd read. Um, hmm. Bear with me just a moment. My computer's taking a moment. (laughs) Yeah, Um, mine does that too. Oh, okay. Okay. So Okay, no, I guess that was it. Why why was I thinking there was oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The um the exposing them completely. That's what it was. Uh, I had a conversation this weekend with someone and I don't have their permission, so I won't say their name. They, they have a very corporate job and in this job, they, they're a huge company and they make industrial products, cleaning products soaps, you know, things like that for, you know, bathroom, hand soap, that kind of thing. And among other things. And a lot, a lot of the constituent products for, to make these products are sourced in China and other countries. And they haven't been able to get them. Um, Since January. And they're at a point now where it's very possible that some of their production lines may go down. And this was in regards to, in the part of the email where she states that these foreign actors will now reveal themselves this same company huge corporation i would say probably a multinational corporation actually Mm -hmm. this particular person was saying that there they had this like town hall meeting where the big head guys in the corporation like the president and ceo or whatever you know big folks in the company were having this town hall meeting with a lot of the employees. And she was remarking to me how during this meeting, they were talking about how important China was going forward for business. And they're all like, well, why are we having such a problem getting our stuff? You know, they're, I guess the employees are kind of like looking at like, what are you talking about? And then she was telling us how all of a sudden they started talking about 
these trips that they're getting ready to go on to these exotic locations. And she's like, and, and, and yet they're having to tighten their belts. It was as though they were exposed. Have you ever seen the movie Liar, Liar with Jim Carrey, where the lawyer can't do anything but tell the truth? Oh, it's been a long time, but yeah. Well, she was, she was equating this to that, that the things that they were sharing with the employees were things that the employees were like, are, are you kidding me? You guys are doing what? It was like they were outing themselves. And when I saw that portion in, of the email, for, for me, I'm feeling there's this, um, it's like an energetic, if you will, that says, time's up. Nothing can be born of a fraud. And so if you're trying to hide something in the dark, it's going to come out one way or the other, even if you're outing yourself. Because there were quite a few employees that apparently she said were disgusted enough that they actually got up and walked out of the meeting because there was some flaunting of these trips that they were going on with their wives or whatever. There was like blatant, you know, and then there was something about um, they were stating that they had acquired a company that was using, uh, that was spraying some pesticides. And I guess several of the employees are really into organics and they were like, you know, it's like they're outing themselves as to what they're really about, thinking it's a good idea. And she said all at once, one of the people that wasn't a really head guy was looking like a little shocked too. Like, are you sure you want to be saying these things? L look at the faces out there. I'm not sure you want to be telling all this kind of thing. So when I saw that, and she had just told me this the day before, I don't know if this is an energetic that's coming into the planet, but it would seem to me like that it's just, a, it was an observation. And I wanted to share that with you because... It seemed like a big one. Well, yeah, thanks for sharing that. That's interesting. Um, Not sure if it means anything in particular, but mm -hmm. I don't know. It just, it, it kind of struck me as, okay, I heard that and now I'm seeing this. And We got a bunch of interesting observations out there yeah. just on the, on the, on the landscape. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's interesting. Well, I don't yeah. know. I really have enjoyed talking with you, but I, 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 I kind of feel like, I don't know, this is really, there's really been not much of a point to this except to say, wow, what is coming up next <laughs> for me anyway? Well, a lot of, a lot of what you observed in the courtroom, that's, that's important to me. We're, we're having a conversation. This is, uh, this is just about you and I putting puzzle pieces together for ourselves and we're recording it. And if people want to listen to that later and they get some benefit out of it, that's great. But the, the purpose for being on here was not to make content. That's, that was just secondary well, thank you for that for, thank you for that. Because sometimes I, I forget that that's what I like to do is just conversate and put that out. And sometimes I, I don't know, I get, like I said, I'm a lot, I'm really hard on myself sometimes. And I feel like, I don't know, sometimes I worry that my observations aren't important or whatever. And I know that's silly because they are, they're important to me. Well, you're the only one that can make your observations. So all of your observations are important. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So we're, we're at the only place that we can be, you know, that, I mean, this doesn't, uh, 
this may not be an earth shattering video, you know, in the, in the YouTube statistic books, but we can't be any other place than we are right now. We've just got a lot of things happening that don't fit into the paradigm that we've been fed our whole lives. And we have to put together a new perception in the moment, but we've been bit so many times by giving our authority away and having false perceptions that really the safest place is to just have no perceptions, just talk about the, the observations that we have and ask questions. And, and what we can say with a lot of the observations that we have is uh, that there's corruption and lying going on. And, you know, uh, we all want it to, to unwind. We all want that stuff to be weeded out of our, uh, of our daily life. And we're at a point where we're still acknowledging the corruption. You know, as Heather says, uh, all the foreign agents – uh, are going to be exposing themselves now. So uh, they expose themselves. We acknowledge that. That's that's step one towards cleaning it up. So to to expect that we're going to go, you know, to the next now moment and everything's going to be all cleaned up, or or oh, that was the watershed moment. Uh, you know, that's that's an unrealistic expectation. It feels like to me. And, uh, we just have to do this one step at a time and maintain full power of our own perception authorship and wait till we, till we sense that emotional experience when, when we, when we're looking at their direct observations. So I want to give you one more word, you know, that, you know, in my way that I do it. Um, and that's the doozy. And I've noticed that the videos that I've put up that have gone the most viral, that have gotten the most censorship, those are the ones that are all doozies. And that's where I provide you with the do, the direct observation. And it's such a potent direct observation that it automatically stimulates you in the sensing and emotional experience. So it kickstarts you and the reauthoring your perception, and that's what a do see is. It's a doozy, and so I think that's where that word came from. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like. I really do like the way you 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 think about that those kinds of things, and I want to have more of those kinds of conversations with you. <laughs> actually, yeah. Well, there's plenty more to have for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really do. Thank you. Thank you for that. Because like I said, I, um, I've said from the very beginning of, of my channel and I make no bones about it. I'm not trying to, and I guess it's a good thing. I'm not, um, make money, get famous, get subscribers, all that. This is just me having conversations with people I find interesting on topics I find intriguing and I, if, if someone else enjoys it, great. If not, yeah. that's fine too. And here's a great example of us talking for, I don't know, roughly how long the jury deliberated and, <laughs> and look where we are. But exactly. there's part of, part of the matrix that's been constructed around us, the control system and Hollywood and with all the, courtroom dramas, the law and order type of shows, the cop shows, uh, and, and just the, the tempo of these shows, how long an episode is, how long a scene cut is, how long these sound bites are, uh, you know, and the impact, the immediate impact that, that they have on the people that are hearing these sound bites in the episode, all of that, I really feel lends right to why this particular jury sat with it for two and a half hours. Like, wow, like we could have watched two and a half episodes of law and order. We did our due diligence. You know what I mean? But <laughs> all they've seen within all of the Hollywood stuff is just program behavior. And they were in the darkness. They were in an absence of behaving any other way. And, you know, I just, 
that other juror that you were mentioning from that other case and and how she was the the one that thought and the one that basically hung the jury um that's the that's the behavior that's the unprogrammed behavior that's the hmm i'm going to observe i'm going to ask questions and i'm really going to scratch my head when they when i ask five times for them to produce the law showing that you know we have to pay income tax and uh, it just makes me wonder if she was the only one that wasn't drinking fluoride. I don't know. You you might be right. But the fact that, like I said, it was the way she worded it that told me that she was the one lone. Because mm -hmm. it it sounded as though no one else even thought of it or agreed with her at first she had to point it out to them and say, but wait, wait a minute. This is what it says. I mean, so even, even though they had asked for the law and it never showed up, and when they sent a note after, I don't know how long of deliberating, a couple of days or something, of waiting for that to come in as they were looking at everything else and never came in. And when they sent a note to the judge, the note came back saying, you have everything you need. <laughs> and she said she actually felt, um, she was shocked. And I th she used some other words, but, um, I can imagine so. She was like, well, where, I mean, he promised us a copy of the law and he never didn't follow through. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, I mean, in that entire movie, actually, that whole documentary, you know, there was former IRS agents that were no longer IRS agents that said the same thing. You know, they had gone looking for the law because people were asking for it. Yeah. And it's not there. So, I mean, it's just one more piece of that whole overall puzzle that shows, you know, what we've allowed over time. And I keep thinking to myself that there's, there's all these different ways to think of this. And it's like, um, you know, when you, I, I guess there's been all kinds of studies. There was something about where, you know, they they had a, I guess they had put monkeys in a cage or something. And it had something to do with the monkeys beating each other or something in order to get bananas or something like that. And then eventually they just did it regardless. Every time a new monkey came in, he got beat up. And it's the same thing. It's the hundred monkey effect in reverse and is what I feel like we've experienced here in that there was some original programming a long, long time ago, and now we just program each other <laughs> as we go. Because I, I clearly see and admit that I, I participated in programming my son. He's 35. Now, you didn't get all of the same programming I got, but there's still programming there, you know, obey authority, you know, all, all these kinds of things that I am now trying to undo in myself. I see very clearly that I, because I was, and it seemed like it was the thing to do. And so there's really no one in my view to actually blame it's just in that I, I love the way BZ put it the unbinding and unwinding now of of stopping it reversing it and I I feel it can be done and will be done it's just a matter of how long it will take <laughs> no I know I know that's the frustrating part well, I think that's what we're watching with Hat J's case. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's 
just one day at a time is all we can do. We can't do any more than that. Yeah. So no, you're right. I don't know. This feels like a, this feels like a lot of progress for one day and yes. we've got some new stuff to look at. I'll be making some more videos, uh, going through more of this paperwork and, uh, once I get through that honor dishonor document, maybe we'll talk again and, okay. and see what's see what's up with that. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming and talking to me. I really appreciate it. I always enjoy our conversations. Yeah, you're welcome. They seem to flow really nicely. They're they're nice. Yeah. Thanks. Well, I wanna I would love to to talk with you again real soon. So I will put a link to your channel in this video. And of course, there'll be a link to Conscious Conversation Central Facebook page and my email address. So thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.